Welcome to the Path Podcast. It's January 15th. My name is Tony. I'm here with Hawk. Hey, man. Hey, Tony. Welcome to the new year. Do you have a good uh, holiday season, what have you? Yeah. It, you know, I have little kids, so the holidays are always special with little kids. Yeah. And um, I work in retail, so the holidays are always special in retail. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, it's pretty exciting shop news going on. Yeah. We are deep in moving the workshop right now. Yeah. I s- so we will have our workshop set up at 649 South B about a half mile from the original shop. I think within a week or two. Oh, as in, um, we've blocked out some, the rep, the next two weeks of service and didn't write any service. Oh, wow. well, that's a slight exaggeration. Right. We still wrote service. If, we recently worked on your bike and you're not happy with how it went. Right. We still write service. If you bought a bike from us, it needs your free tune up. Mm, right. And we still write service in a couple other situations like that, where we kind of feel like we owe sure. it to someone to sure. take care of their bike ASAP. Right. Um, but we were not writing service for repairs for anyone that wasn't kind of already in the system need kind of owed something. Right. Right. Um, or where we really needed to make something happen just to, you know, take care of our own kind of thing. Right. Um, so about one fourth to one fifth of the normal service load so that all the tech we don't on a, any given day, we have four techs working. Right. Right. Pl- plus a tech, plus a service rider, plus a workshop manager. So most of that staff is going to be focused on moving the workshop for the next two weeks. Oh, wow. That's exciting. And it's another big undertaking. It's cool. Yeah. So I see like in the, in the new workshop area, you have stands that are set up. Uh, like, uh, workbenches, workbenches. They're, uh, one, the, the pilot workbenches are completely set up. Right. And then there are three more that are in various phases of becoming set up. Right. And then there will be two more on top of that. So we will ultimately have six work work bays back there, plus the two service riding stations right. up here. So in the, how is the transition going to work? Because don't you have workbenches set up in the in the um, in the uh, in the old shop? We're calling it the First Street Store lately. The First Street Store, thank you. First Street Store and the B Street Store, both in Tustin. Um, yes, we have workbenches set up there. Some of those will be moving here. Got it. Some of those will stay there to be part of our box bike building facility. Mm, got it. Right. So you're not going to, are you going to throw those on the pack yak? <laughs> <laughs> They're a little heavy for you. I, I bet, I, you know, I bet we could. Maybe we should just for fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would be disaster if that thing tipped over. I've been riding that thing around a little bit. It's really fun. The oh, pack yak is a, it's a giant utility e-bike that we've been using for in, transfers between the shops. Right. <laughs> it's rad. <laughs> I'm, I'm so tempted to try and sell my e- e-bike commuter and, and get a pack yak. There's something about turning mm-hmm. the handlebars and having the front rack not move that I, I, I just like it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that does something for yeah. me. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I looked at the weight of that thing. I remember it being really heavy. I forget it's either what it seventy-five is. or ninety-five. It's really heavy. It's really heavy. So, I have to I have to transport my my commuter bike, commuter e-bike on my bike rack once in a while, and and um, I don't know. See, right now I just got a new bike rack, and so it's not the fact that it's going to overload the bike rack. It's the fact that I'm not sure I could get it on the bike rack. It's a lot of bike. It's a lot of bike. Yeah. yeah. But my new bike rack, it's a, it's a rigged, rigged supply. Oh, how awesome. Oh my gosh. It is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I got the ramble rack with the two bike fold up. Uh, and then I also got this, uh, gosh, the swing out. Yeah. Uh, and that swing out is a, is a beast. I don't know yeah. what's more impressive, the actual bike rack or the swing out. Do you use the swing out a lot on your truck? I do. Um, I have a ridge line, and so it has that tailgate that opens, that swings out as well. Okay. And so um, so a couple things. Being able to swing the bike rack out of the way and, and open the open the uh, tailgate that way uh, is, is great. 
Uh, and then, but also, even if you just drop the tailgate down, if your bike, if you have a bike rack, it's a little bit cumbersome to get up onto the tailgate mm. because it's extending. You could drop the tailgate, but the, your rack is still extending out past the tailgate. Yeah. Like if you want to load something heavy. Right. Or if you just want to hang out on the back of your truck after, after a ride oh, or yeah. something. Yeah. So it's, uh, I went on a road trip to Zion and Bryce over the holidays and I can't tell you having that swing out was amazing. So it was awesome. Awesome. Very yeah, cool. So, and that thing I think can hold 300 pounds or something like that. So amazing. Could hold a pack yak. Did you do anything cool in Zion and Bryce? Uh, hiking some, you know, some quick hiking, slogging, maybe slow jog hiking. (laughs) And so, uh, yeah, the, the Bryce is otherworldly beautiful. I mean, Zion is amazing. Uh, we got to Bryce. It had, it had snowed maybe in, you know, a few days before we got there. And when we got there, blue skies, uh, wispy clouds, but pretty much blue skies. So the, um, the sunrise sunsets were amazing. Uh, and it was 19, a little under 20 degrees. E. Yeah, it was chilly, uh, but, uh, amazing. It was sun on the, all the hood with the snow on the hoodoos and the various oranges and what have you. Amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of color there. Right. Highly, highly recommend getting out there. If you Have you been there before? I had never been there. Oh, cool. Yeah. So more shop news, yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, the original path location is now the first that I know of of its kind. Oh, what is that? It's a mountain bike outlet store. Mm. Have you heard of that? Have, have you seen such a thing before? I have not seen such a thing. It's a whole store full of stuff that's on sale. So helmets and shoes and knee pads and elbow pads and jerseys and shorts and all that stuff's at least 50% off. Oh, man. And all the bikes are 25 to 50% off. Wow. And today we put a bunch of, um, a bunch of new Patagonia stuff became last year's. Mm, right. So two big boxes of Patagonia stuff going over to the outlet store tomorrow. Oh, man. And every day it's something new. There's always new discounts. Um, we're working some new deals with some of our vendors on some, like we kind of similar to the trances that we have right. crazy deals on that giants helping us make happen. Right. Right. So, so it's not, it's not even, yeah, that's fantastic. 10 to five, seven days a week, half of the original path store, half a mile from our new store. Right. Um, you walk in. And when you walk in, I think the first impression, if you don't know what's going on is like, is the path going out of business? Like they don't have quite as much merchandise as usual. Right. And like everything's on sale and it doesn't seem like they have all the hot new stuff right now. And that's why it's an outlet store. It's an outlet store, but come to the six, uh, six forty nine B. And the more time I spend here, the more that shop really just feels like it was an outlet. Like, (laughs) I mean, this shop is so much better lighting and, and kind of, the lines of merch as like the experience of walking through the merch is really clean and not having the dusty old stuff that we're getting rid of too. Mm, right. Cause it, you know, we always buy aggressively, right? We always are after the hot new thing that if you do that 10 times, like if you're lucky, three of them turn out not to be hot. Right. Right. Like, right. Right. If you, and so those, whatever those three, that could be 20 or 30 bikes. Right. That are just the ones that we liked, but, they weren't as popular as other ones that we liked. Right. Right. So, and that's not to say it's lesser quality or lesser this, that, or the other thing. I mean, like, especially if you're not that person who always needs the latest, greatest thing. Right. Right. We all know who we are. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I like the idea, the excellent execution. I don't think I'm that person. I I am that person who likes the hottest, newest thing. In this context, you are. In this context. I I suspect that you and I are the same and that I'm this person in this, in the context of mountain bikes, I'm kind of obsessed with all the new stuff coming out all the time. And I always want to try all the new stuff. And, um, and I usually, on a lot of topics, I'm kind of wishing we were two years from now even. Mm, Right. Right. Um, Like I, just for example, side note, I, I came to the realization that, other than like high bike and some weird, weird European com- companies, no one makes a 170 mixed wheel Bosch e bike, like an enduro style mixed wheel Bosch e bike. Oh wow! 
Wow. I ha- Isn't that wild? That is. I want that. Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> a Bosch e-bike. Um, an enduro, a proper mixed wheel enduro Bosch e-bike doesn't ex- doesn't yeah. exist by any company that has broad U.S. distribution right. that I know of. I'd love to hear otherwise. Um, we are bringing in Crestline, which does that. Crestline. Nice. Yeah, stoked. I talked to Crestline. I talked to the main dude at Crestline. I should have put it in my notes. can't think of his name right now, but I talked to the main dude at Crestline the other day. Awesome guy. Used to race Fontana. Mm. Knows all our local trails. Lives in Bellingham now. S- super committed to all the right things and like super aligned with the paths kind of value system. And guy sh- obviously shreds. Right. Um, so we're stoked that we're going to someday when they have them again, have cross line bikes, <laughs> at which time we will have a mixed wheel box, but, but that'll be like, we'll probably get three the right. first year or something. Right. Like those right. are very limit. Those are like a scarce commodity, scarce, scarce, special thing. What is his, what is his timeline and, and what have you? I think that we're going to get a few in spring if oh. we're like, if, if things go well. Right. So uh, American made. I don't believe the frames are American made, but I don't, did, did you have the impression that they were, I don't, I don't believe they are. Um, but they're, they're more just like they're, they have the good vision. Right. Right. And good, like high, high sense of quality and commitment to, to, um, rider centric Mm, type. Right. I think it looks rad. Yeah. That's really interesting. It's a, it's a really, it's a really interesting niche that he's that he's filling on the e-bike, right? First of its kind, maybe. You mean mixed wheel, oh, Bosch yeah, powered yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. And the the vision of that company, like it's a uh, not many small, smaller uh, bike companies e e focused. Oh, I, you know yeah, I mean? and the ones that are kind of reek but the crestline has like like just casual shred signal yeah. th- like thickness like really really deep in right. in like our kind of culture right 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 but any other kind of startup mountain startup e only brands that i've noticed yeah tend yeah. to be like oh you're not bike insiders like you you don't know what we do right you don't right, know right. what goes on on the trail you don't know what goes on in the bike shop right 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 um but Crestline definitely has this, the more of a set, uh, uh, like a f- all in sense of like, you're just one of us. Right. Yeah. Where, uh, what, um, what's his background? Good question. I don't really know. Mm, no, that's okay. We mo- more talked about like the business model and the availability right. and the future products and the path, but I hope to ride with, with him someday, maybe even have him on the podcast. That'd be fantastic. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, but I am, I think that when the word gets out, people are going to really like the option of an outlet store because some of like surfing, right? I don't surf as much as I used to. And when I buy surfing stuff, I'll take the one that's half off. That's last year's. Right. Right. And so I, I think there's a lot of people who are, who are a little more sensible with their mountain biking purchases than I am, right, who are going right. to really, really like having yeah. an outlet store. And the beauty of it is that you still get your free tune up at the path. Right. And you still can return it to the path if that's where you're at. And you still have the path's full service behind you. Right. So I think, I think we're going to be able to position ourselves to our vendors as look, we can help you get rid of your overstock in a way that is going to devalue your brand less and bring you more repeat customers. Right. 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 Because if you do it through some like some liquidation on some big online liquidation channel, you don't get that's their many, right. That's their many, culture, and you don't get as many repeat customers yeah, that way because yeah, you don't yeah. get as much added value. And yeah, you don't get as many stoked riders, and yeah. so I'm kind of hopeful that we can serve this role of of being able to keep our original spot, yeah, and serve this role for the community of having deals on this really expensive stuff, right, without having the last year's stuff getting in the way of us having all the hot new stuff. Right. And I think it helps. It makes all the hot new stuff look even hotter when it's only (laughs) next to the other hot new stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So 
Yeah, it's exciting. Nice. Yeah, this is. This is. And if, you know, I think you can see a little bit behind us onto the, the bars and maybe bars and forks uh, and stems. I really like the way that's that's all come out. Thanks. Yeah. I have some, I, we've had something actually really pretty unfortunate. And, and maybe I'm a little over dramatic, but our text app has been down for over a week. Hmm. And what that means, pe- we have, People, we have an app that we can text, send and receive text from our shop landline. Right. 714 669 It's been our number for 25 years. And you can, as of the last probably seven years, you could text us on that number. So a lot of our staff or a lot of our, our customers, right, customers they really? know that and they text us on that number. And right now, if you text that number, it looks like it goes through, but we didn't get it. And it's oh been like God. that for like a week. So apologies to everyone who wow. did get a reply. It's not because we don't love you anymore. Right. Um, can you send texts out? We can send texts from our Tribuco Canyon phone number. Mm. So we have been texting customers ongoingly from our Tribuco Canyon phone number, letting them know what's going on. Right. But for a while, texts were coming in, and we were able to transfer them to the Tribuco Canyon number and answer them because we couldn't answer them. Right. Right. And then I think last Thursday they stopped even coming in. Oh man. And it has to do with we're, we're moving our phone number. We moved our phone number from a first street to location. B street. Right. Because we're moving in the workshop and most of the phone, like a, a lot right. of the phone calls are, are service. So, um, my, my very, my kind of patchwork of it and phone, and experts, we thought we had it figured out to where we could move the phone number without causing any disruption, but um, it ended up w- shutting down our texting app. Wow! Uh, and it's been it's a bummer. Like I th- some customers have been kind of pe- like not not too happy with us right, right. because we didn't answer their message. Right, <laughs> understandably, understandably so. Right, and then you know. From my perspective, I, I if I know there's five customers who felt that way, if I hear from five customers who there's, felt that way, I assume there's 50 who didn't say anything. Right. Which just is like, oh. So hopefully all of those 50 hear this. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. It should be back up and running any day. So Any insight as to, I mean, I understand that. What is your, what is the, uh, what is the, the text app say? Like the support? Well, first they just seemed really confused. And then... And we were like, hey, we're in the process of porting our number. Do you think that's it? And they were like, we'll see. And they got back to us and like, the reason that your text app isn't working is because you're porting your number (laughs) (laughs) after like four days. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And we're like, okay, what can, can you make it work? They're like, not till the number's done porting. So it got done porting on Friday. Right. And we immediately, as soon as the phone started ringing again in the new look, Right. That number started ringing here at B Street. We immediately contacted Podium, and they said it would take twenty-four to forty-eight hours. And here we are. Mm. I guess may, now work days. <laughs> twenty-eight to forty-eight. I was going to say hours. perhaps they perhaps they perhaps it's only been twenty-four hours by their clock because we have only had one office day since then. Right. And today being Martin Luther King Day, maybe the time the clock is still stopped for right. all I know. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so hopefully the messaging app starts working again right. tomorrow. Right. Um it's awesome being able to text our customers and receive texts from our customers yeah. and we love it and our customers love it and it only sucks when it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> and it's one of those two things too, where when you have the technology, it's great until it's not, and then you're like you're like, Whoa, oh no, yeah, and like, it, and it's kind of like, what do you do? Because we know there's a bunch of people who we owe answers to, but we don't know who they are. Oh my! Gosh. All we can do is we put it in our newsletter. You know, we right. put it in our social media. And we're we're talking about it on the podcast, podcast right? But it's kind of a bummer to know. There's probably there. I bet you there's a handful. I bet you there's two to five people who were going to buy a bike from us who didn't know because of that. Mm, it, yeah. Just to get started. Right? right. Like not, not to mention service, how many people who kind of had this flawless idea of what it's like to work with us, who now know what it's like to be frustrated working with us. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's, um, please be patient with us. Uh, thank you for your patience in advance. Totally. 
and, yeah, and, and retroactively as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see. I got kind of a interesting off the record bit of information recently. All right. Because I've been digging around because, okay. We sell a lot of Fizu bikes with Fazua motors. Yep, I have one. I am heavily invested in Fazua inventory because of the transition relay. Right. I'm a huge believer in the Santa Cruz Heckler SL. Yep. And I'm a huge believer in the Pivot mm -hmm. Zoro SL. Right. So we're, we're That's we a have huge, a lot of money right. invested in Fazua, and their reputation is kind of experiencing some shakiness. Mm, right. Um. So I've been kind of trying to get my feelers out. Like what's really like, how, how reliable are they really? How unreliable are they really? Right. How rampant? Because when we launched the, when we, when we first started working with Fazua with the um, shuttle SL, probably 16 months ago or so. Right. Take, yep. Um, they launched it and immediately had a lot of software problems. Mm. And that came at the same time as our techs and probably all the other techs in the bike and in, in, in retail were experiencing kind of the steep part of the learning curve of working on the system. Right, right. So that's kind of a double whammy. Um, and then the knockout, the, the on, top, on top of those two things, Fazua for the first month or two didn't really have an answer. So there were people who had software issues that we couldn't resolve. Oh, wow. What were some of the symptoms of that? If I remember correctly, but I think it was mostly, I think it was like, just like your bike wouldn't work. Mm, I, uh, I had a couple of these okay. <laughs> brief moments. Um, so they ultimately came out with a software update that fixed it. Mm, yeah. One of the things I found out uh, off the record on this phone call is that apparently the reason that happened is they were forced to switch um, chip makers towards the toward pretty close to the launch and they thought that the software was going to work with the new chip better than it did right but anyway that's behind us i feel really good about this yeah. i we worked out the last one of those issues in the i think in like the around this time of 2023 and most of them were resolved by like november of 2022 right, right. or december or something so it was just like a six week thing. And then that was behind us. We've seen kind of here and there, maybe more warranties than Bosch for sure. Mm, okay. Um, we think, you know, we don't, we don't track it closely enough to say beyond kind of anecdotal. Right. Um, especially because one of the things we don't track is like what we are, what our perception of, of how many of them are in the field that we service right. versus how many of them we want. Cause you'd really need to know that to get any sort of warranty sure. percentage. Right, right. Um, so I, I kind of got, I'd gotten some feedback like, Oh, this brand off the record. I don't even know which brand. Someone told me that they had talked to a, a principal at a brand who said that it felt like every single one was failing. And I was like, oh, harsh. And I was like, that's not my perception. Like we have, I, I, we had a customer recently who had, who we warranted their Fazua motor, motor and then immediately they needed another one. And that's about, and now I think they're okay. Right. And both times I think he was off the, the first time I think he was off the bike for like two, three weeks. We gave him a loaner bike. Right. Second time I think he was off the bike for like a week because we just pulled a motor out of another bike. Right. Right. Um, because you know we just didn't want to be off the bike anymore. right right so but but we have sold hundreds of bikes with fazua yeah. and for the most part most of them seem to be for, even that one guy currently as of today as far as i know all of our fazua's customers bikes are working right and if yeah. they cut and tomorrow that might be different right, right. i'll probably right, see right. one tomorrow right. but, <laughs> but that person will be taken care of and so forth um so I started feeling around like, what's the real warranty percentage? Mm. And I don't know for sure, but the, the impression I'm getting is that it's about 6%. Well, no, the impression I'm getting is that they claim it's about 6% and none of us quite believe it. We think it's a little higher than that, mm. but not much. And so by 6%, does that mean if a hundred people buy f bikes with Fazua, six, six of them within the first two years have a warranty claim, have a warranty issue, right? 
Now, part of that, how could we know? Because we're not even two years in. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we're but getting even, close enough to two years to maybe yeah, project it. Yeah. Um, and this is why it feels a little bit higher is because, because you're not two years into it and it, you're probably already seeing 6%. It feels maybe feels like probably feels like it could be that high. Um, and I think part of this, what I, what I kind of gleaned is that Bosch might be somewhere in the twos Mm, and that Shimano might be maybe somewhere a little higher than that. Not much. Right. 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 And to me, when I, when I was thinking about this, my, my kind of immediate assumption would was that under three would be really good. What gives you that sense of under three? Uh, I've heard here and there around the bike industry that for a for a frame, right. um, under two is really good. Right. And I feel like it's probably harder to keep the warranty rate low on a motor than on a frame. Right. I would agree with that. So that's I just was like maybe a little higher than a frame, but it shouldn't be too much higher than a frame. Maybe like three. Right. It would be good. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um. So. It sounds like our our gut feeling that Bosch was doing really quite well on this was is accurate. accurate, right? And also that Shimano is pretty good too is yeah. accurate. Yep. Yeah. And also our perception was that while it's pretty good, Shimano's warranty rate is higher than Bosch, and that mm. also I think is true. Right. Um, and then and maybe Fazua is getting better. Fazua is kind of unacceptably high, but also not that bad. As in lots and lots of people never have a problem with their Fazua. Right. You um, think it's getting better? And the, uh, Yes. And one of the things that I kind of gleaned is that, and this is kind of all hearsay and rumor, but kind of like pretty well vetted hearsay and rumor. <clears throat> um, <laughs> one of the things I kind of gather is that one of the failure points on Fazua has been that there's kind of three bolts that hold the whole assembly together. I believe it's three. There's okay. some bolts that hold the whole assembly right. together. And apparently they were cleaning the bolts with rubbing alcohol and then applying a retaining compound. Mm. And apparently depending on the day, depending on the conditions, depending on the tech, if you sometimes the rubbing alcohol wasn't drying all the way. Right. And then it was compromising the retaining compound. Wow. And apparently they bought a machine that cleans the bolts, properly processes them and applies the, the retaining compound. And they think that's going to drastically lower their yeah. failure rate. And that sounds possible, plausible. Right. So hopefully that's true. Wow. Right. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of information, wow. but you know what? Something else that came out of all this for me is, um, Fazu is by far the most aesthetically clean motor as, mm, as far as yeah. you can actually, it's the only one you can actually fully hide inside right. the frame. Right. And it's also the least bulky. Right. Um, it also has a, what it really cool. It's fairly quiet compared to most of them. Yeah. It doesn't rattle. It doesn't have a lot of the downsides of a lot of the motors. Yep. And it's got a really kind of nice, uh, I like how it interacts with the rider in terms of power output a lot. Mm, yeah. So it got me to th realizing like, you know, there's a lot good about it. And, um, we, we've talked on the show about this hot new motor that's coming from Bosch. That's going to be a, maybe the first real competitor for the Fazua as in like, in like intended to be lightweight, yep. intended for the SL bike. Right. Um, I guess there's the T TQ it would be the other one. Right. Right. Um, and that's also quite hidden, not quite as hidden as the Fazua though. Yeah. And also only 50 Newton meters, which is less than the, yeah. yeah. So, and the Fazua has that 15 second burst. What was pointed out to me is the form factor on that new Bosch is not going to be like the Fazua. It's going to be much more visible and, and mm. bulky. And I believe that to be true. Right. And then that got me to be thinking like, you know, I think I would take a 3% higher warranty rate for that personally. The, the aesthetic. Yeah. For that, for that look that, yeah. and, and so that, I, I guess, long story short, I, I had a slight faltering in our, in the past mm, investment in so many good. bikes with Fazua, but yeah. I think I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Yeah. One, they're standing behind it Two, They seem to have found the actual root cause of the problem. 
Yes, and, and our mechanics are good at working on them. Right. Um, particularly, you know, Jesse owned one and he got really good at working on them. And he kind of became our go-to person for right. the harder ones. And Zach's just like an e-bike whiz. And right. and we we have them in our demo program, which means we have mm. a lot of we're always working on those bikes. Right. Right. And we sold so many of those shuttle SLs. <laughs> oh, right. When those first came out, those were so hot. Right. Right. Um, I remember they were so hot that people. That was one of the. That was towards the kind of end of the COVID yeah. era demand boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was one of the last bikes that I remember that it was permissible for an employee at the path to tell someone, there is no ETA, we can't order you that. <laughs> Gosh. There's no bike currently that we strong, can say that about. That's right, exactly. <laughs> some strong language. Because, you know, they were giving us ETAs of like maybe a year. Right. And, you know, right. it, it, it did continue to be really popular, but about six months later, they had them in open stock because then the post COVID um, like thing happened do, and, yeah. and everyone canceled a lot of orders. And, right, right. But we did sell a lot and have continued to sell a lot of those shuttle SLs. And then, so that gave us a lot of practice early with Fazua. Right. And the relays, then the relays came along. And I haven't gotten to ride it very much yet. I really think my relay might be the most confidence, confidence inspiring bike I've ever had. I was just thinking that I rode it. I've ridden mine quite a bit and yeah, I rode mine Saturday morning. I think I called you right afterwards. I didn't want to like gloat about how wonderful the ride was <laughs> <laughs> given the context of our conversation. But it was an amazing, I'll gloat now. It was an amazing ride and the conditions are awesome. And I was like, Oh man, I've just been talking about how I've been backing off of some of the more like, big tech techie features uh with with consequence but riding that bike has made me think about man it sort of makes me want to get back out there on some of these features you know i can see that and um yeah and you know thanks to you and and zach for uh correcting my spring rate uh, in my fork uh, and since I did that, it's even, it's even I forget better. what was the story with that. I think I had put in like a 45 pound spring into, uh, into my, um, uh, Zeb with the, uh, with the smash pot conversion. Um, and I think it, I think I should have put in a 35, which I actually oh. ended up doing that. And it's, it's awesome. Nice. Well balanced. Yeah. Nice. So anyways, yeah, it, it is the slackest head angle I've ever ridden. 62 and a half or 62 and I think it's six, Yeah, right in there. Yeah. Um, it's the first bike I've ever had with TRP brakes. Mm, okay. It's, I, I have Saints on mine, but yeah. There's something about a, a, an e-bike that's mid 40 pounds mm -hmm. that you can move around, mm -hmm. but that you don't have a lot of conflict about running like really meaty tires or really meaty brake rotors or anything. Mm, right. Where like if that were a bike I had to pedal at the top, I would maybe hesitate to run just all the meatiest yeah. stuff. Yeah. But man, it sure does add confidence. It does. It does. Yeah. And, and it's a, it's a proper enduro bike. Yeah. 180 mine set up 180, 170. Yeah. And I think yours is either 170, 170 or 180, 170, 170, 170. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 You know, um, we we're talking before the show about our biggest fans deal. <laughs> right. So yeah. Kathy Bates misery. <laughs> <laughs> so here the, the, we have some special pricing. We have lots of bikes on sale, but we also have lots of 2024 and some 2023 bikes that aren't on sale. Right. It's January. It's a buyer's market. We need to hit some sales goals. Right. We gave the staff some special pricing on a lot on not all the models that we have in mm -hmm. stock that aren't on sale, but most of them, they have something they can do. Mm, right. Like some of them, it might only be 5%. Right. Some of them, it's 20%. Wow. Right. In fact, if the bike has been in stock since before July 3rd, 2023, it's 20%. Oh. So that price isn't advertised on our website. Right. It's not ever it's it's in fact if we did advertise it we would we would be break violating our dealer contracts because we're not allowed to advertise right. price that low on those right. bikes right but we're totally allowed to sell them for whatever we want right 
Um, so the staff has these prices. They're there for good customers. They're there for um, bikes that we really want to sell. Like these twenty, if, mm-hmm. if someone comes in sure. and they're looking at one of these twenty twenty these bikes that we've had since before July, right? right. You know, like over five months. Um, there's a good chance someone on the staff's gonna be like, "Hey, I can I can help you out. You, let me show you what price I can do on this, and it'll be like a good price." Right. Um, so we wanted to make sure all of our biggest fans are part get a chance, mm, get in on this, right? right? So we let we sent it out in our email. Yep. We sent it out on social media, and yep. now we're bringing it up on the podcast. And the idea is, any new bike that we have in stock, let us know that you want our secret biggest fans price on it. We'll tell you what it is, and you'll be impressed. And the relay is on there, and it's one of the better discounts. Oh, man. Yep. That is an excellent bike. Penguin always faces south, by the way. I, what does? Penguin always faces south. It's from the movie Misery. Okay. I am your biggest fan, Donnie. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm, should I be scared? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You got to watch the movie Misery. It's pretty. <laughs> Kathy Bates, she won Best Actress. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. I remember being scared in the preview. Yeah. It's, <laughs> anyways. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Biggest fan pricing. That's great. And, um, a lot, of, a lot. There's a fair number of like uh, certain pivot models that we've had in stock th- since July twenty right. third. So there's a few. The, the, if you're a regular at the path, you probably know which ones we've had since before. <laughs> right, <July>. right. <laughs> but if there's one you've been eyeballing, it, it wouldn't hurt to ask. Mm. Yeah. So you can email us, you can call us, you can text us, and maybe uh, tomorrow you can text us. Okay, so this show's going to come out on Wednesday. Yeah, so you can it's text Monday us. Monday right you, now. You should really be able to text us. If you can't text us on Wednesday, I'm going to cry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but also, um, if you don't get a text back within about 20 minutes, uh, maybe try an email or, you know. You could call that number. You can. You could call. And it'll go through. And um, our Tribuco Canyon shop is 949-589-2800. And that's still working and we're still texting from there. So you can still, if you get this, if you're like sitting outside eavesdropping, you could text us. (laughs) All right. What's that number again? 949-589-2800. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, oh, you know what else I think has happened since the last show is um, you can ship, we can ship virtually every bike brand. So... The last show we talked about how we could sh- ship score bikes, score. and, and since then those twenty thirties have been selling, that's especially the medium large because mm. that's such a yeah. money size for like yeah. that five ten person yeah. who really has a hard time choosing between medium right. and large right. five nine five ten five eleven. Right. Um, but we made a big deal about that on the last show, which is great. Um, it is a big deal, and it has been a big deal for us. Even bigger deal. The next week. Just a few weeks ago, we got the online dealer contract for Santa Cruz bikes. Hey, that's awesome. It's a milestone for the path. I'm glad you brought it up. It's for me, it's a little even emotional. Like it's been a real journey getting like, I kind of gave myself this assignment about like a year and a half ago, I think right. like, Hey, all right, Tawny self, right. your job is your one. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is <laughs> you have to go and get all of the brands to let us sell their bikes online because right. we're transitioning into a national yeah. brand. And if we can't sell the if we can't sell the bikes online, then how how does that work? Right. And um, at the time, we were allowed to sell. I think maybe just last year's Kona's, and maybe we had gotten the Orbea deal by then. Mm. But pretty much most of the bikes we had in the shop, we weren't allowed to ship. Right. I think we got the Orbea deal first, but like right, but even at the time, we didn't even have that. Right. I think. And that was only like a year and a half ago. And at first, it was kind of a hard pitch because they're like, "Oh, you guys are going to do that? Like, oh, you're going to, you're going right. to, sure, of course you are. Like, you know, which is understandable." Um, I was like, "Oh, this reminds me of when I first opened the shop." Mm. Like. <laughs> Like, um, but Orbea came on board and then, um, let's see, after that was Kona or no, after that was Rocky mountain 
and then Norco. Right. And then Kona, and then Giant, and then Pivot. And Pivot, w- Giant was this time last year. Pivot was, um, I think, November of 2023, so not long ago. Right. Um, and then Score and Santa Cruz. And now the only brand we sell that we can't ship is Transition. Oof. And it's it's a big deal for us. It's kind of a, a milestone, like I said. So I, I feel it's like, like a sigh of relief. Like, wow, we did it. Like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I feel like Santa Cruz, I, I mean, that's uh, feels like that's a really going to pay dividends. You know, in sales, you don't like to have to say no. Right. And we had not having that dealer contract put us in a position where we had to say no a lot. And so hopefully that that trend continues because now it's yes. Right. And we ship free. I think that's noteworthy because not every lot, a lot of our competitors charge 80 bucks or whatever to ship. Yeah. And the, I mean, again, as a, (laughs) if anyone's ever tried to ship a bike, it's nowhere close to being free. (laughs) It, it's about 40 minutes of a skilled person's time. It's about $40 worth of materials and it's about anywhere from 150 to $250 to the, yeah. to the carrier. Yeah. I mean, that's a 350, $400 investment to ship a bike. It could be. Yeah. Especially if time you're not doing it in, at yeah. scale, the more scale you do it, it helps a little bit, yeah. but not, there's only, there's only so much scale you can accomplish right. with it. Right. Um, so Santa Cruz, um, what are some of the, uh, what are some of the bikes that we should be expecting to see, uh, larger runs to, to be shipping and, and what have you, some of the models that, that, well, to me, you know, we talked about the Heckler SL. Yeah. We pretty much have every single one in stock. Oof. Right. Every, almost every color size and build. And the reason is because myself and a lot of the people making these decisions at the path really, we've had a lot of success with selling and riding and enjoying the lighter, lighter, the SL type e-bikes. Yep. A lot of us like Fazua and a lot of us like mixed wheels. Yep. And, and that that's brings the it only, all together. That's the only one. So we went really deep on that yeah. one. Yeah. And it's kind of the bike that a lot of us were turning our rises into. Right. Like a 150, because, 160 mixed wheel yeah. trail bike. Right. Um, so to me, that that's definitely an important one, but we have a ton of blurs right now because um, for pedal bikes, the lighter ones are what people seem to be yeah, excited about. Sure, sure. Um, you can, the whole mixed wheel lineup that Santa Cruz does, I feel is, is um, still way ahead of everyone else. Right. Um, with the 5010, the, 50 the Bronson, 10, and the Nomad sure. are all proper dedicated mixed wheel bikes in categories that most people that mostly don't exist. Right. Um, and then the tall boy and the high tower still are super iconic and like the high tower is still probably the right trail bike for tons of people. Right. So, right. The high tower and, and the Bronson, those are great bikes to have like matched together, you know, kind well, of, well, and, you know, everyone's super excited about the score 2030. Right. And, and you know, the score 2030, it's, it's really exciting because it's a half a degree slacker than a tall boy. Right. <laughs> right. So like <laughs> it, other than that, they're both 120, 130 bikes. Right. They're both sh- super shreddy and, and sexy looking and great companies. And, um, but everyone's all excited about the score because it's just a little more progressive, but right. like point being the tall boy has always been kind of a fan favorite Heck and yeah. it's still super, super Heck relevant, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And as much as we said, sometimes it's gotten a little bit heavier. I think what people are doing on that bike is probably warrants, warrants that being a little bit heavier. If you want a super light, get a blur. <laughs> Yeah, I think the tall boy is close to as light as like a smuggler. Yeah, I think if you, in my opinion, if you if if you feel like kindred spirit with with the show and you want it super light, you might like the Rocky Mountain Element. Mm, that's right. If I was going to build a super light dual twenty nine right now, I'll tell you. You know, Zach test 
Zach got himself a set of those Zip Moto high top wheels. Oh, this very, right. very light right. Zip Moto right. rims, and he's raving about them. He says they're everything that's good about Zip Moto and an XC weight package. And right. He's raving about them, which got us to talking like, well, if, if I had some of those, what bike would I put them on? And I kind of thought about it for a while, and I was thinking maybe Smuggler, and I was like, no, Rocky Mountain Element, mm. 100%. Right. Get that thing to 26 pounds. Right. Or maybe a trance. It's not as slight, I, you know what I think if I just shooting from the hip, I'm guessing that trance frame is six and three quarters pounds, and I'm guessing the Rocky Mountain elements five and three quarters pounds, Oof. and six and three quarters pounds nice and light. Right, right. Um, I think the element frame is more in the spur weight category. Mm, got it right, and it's got a, a proper suspension. It's got a horse link. Right, not a flex day. Yeah. Oh. Flex days. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were at a holiday party recently at our friend Andrew's oh, house. Yeah, yeah. And were you there when Justin was talking about flex days? <laughs> no, but I heard him. Okay. <laughs> was yeah. that part of the conversation? <laughs> right. Okay. So I've talked about on the show how sometimes, like, I never feel like flex days offer kind of the, the right, feel right compared to a real link right. any real link even a single pivot right, right, um, right and i think they're good for certain kinds of riding and I, it's not that i think they have no place in the world but i don't like how they ride for right me. and especially in certain moments i found they do something mm. very unnerving and we were talking with um andrew and like joe just, right Right. Just some guy named Joe. Some guy named Joe, right? <laughs> <laughs> we should, I mean, I'm going to name drop. His last name is Lawwell. Okay, right. <laughs> right. Anyway, this guy, Justin, he's he's an engineer, and he's kind of like our, he's a podcast listener and uh, avid, real right. serious mountain biker, rides a lot and thoughtful. Enthusiastic. And very enthusiastic. <laughs> he makes, a, makes some mean smoked ribs. Oh, yeah. For Justin, um, thank you for those. Those were amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he was pointing out that when you bottom out the shock on that, the, the flex stay suspension can continue to move. Mm. The stay can continue to flex. Yeah. yeah. And I, that sounds true to me. Intuitively, yeah. it makes sense. Sure. Um, I'm not 100% sure it's all dead accurate, but it seems right. And he's pointing out that once that happens, it loads up and it's this big mm. undamped rebound release right. which is what i've experienced right is this sudden load up feeling and sudden like undamped rebound feel right and so i was like huh i think maybe i felt that before right. on some of these bikes right um and so a lot of riders don't bottom out their suspension much they would not feel it much right right like, right right and maybe when they do they don't think it's supposed to feel good or whatever right like <laughs> because you've just bottomed it out <laughs> maybe not supposed to feel ru- good but not that bad it's not supposed to feel dangerous that bad. Right, right right um right. so i thought that was interesting and it also got me to think you know if the rear end is moving a little bit independently of this of the damper yeah then you're always getting a little bit of undamped right, movement right right then and, and maybe the further you get into it into the travel the further that is maybe it exasperates that situation i think so yeah. That's my sense because the further you get into it, the more the shock is fighting. Exactly. And the more, more, that more that of those forces might be just going to flexing the rear end. Right. Right. Like, right. It's really interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was tempted to break the conversation I was in to step over when I heard that part of the conversation going on. Yeah. <laughs> I think I saw you look over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was great. I'm glad I remembered that. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, okay. Did you see Minar went to Norco? I did. That was that was just revealed. That's recent. You know what I didn't realize was, was this the first time that, and maybe he said it on a podcast, but in, I think it was an Instagram post or maybe it was on a website. But uh, he was like, yeah, it was a surprise to me too. Mm. Like it I wasn't think a that, mutual release. It was just a. That's there's some speculation like. around this. I think Greg planned on retiring, mm. and I think that they allocated his contract money elsewhere. Mm. Is the kind of giving Santa Cruz, 
not the benefit of the doubt because there's nothing wrong with them not right. resigning Greg right, Minor, right, right, right. but kind of the from Greg from loyalty to Greg's standpoint benefit right. of the doubt. Right. Um, that I do think maybe that's what happened is mm. that they thought he was going to retire, so they spent his money on other athletes. Right. I also think though that maybe the old ownership would have come up with some extra budget at that time. Right. Right. Yeah, so off to off to Norco. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. It'll be interesting to see if he helps them develop a downhill bike. Right. It'll be interesting to see if he can win on Norco. And if he can't, it's not I mean he's he's not that young. Right. Yeah, what is Norco going to have him race on? I'm not so. totally sure, but I think he's going to start out racing a range with a dual right. round fork on it, the the mm-hmm. big enduro bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, but I don't know. Maybe they maybe they will unveil something. Right. Maybe he'll be on prototypes. Right. I gotta think he's going to need a proper downhill bike for some of the courses. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, man, and. There just seems to be a lot of race teams just stopping and athletes more than usual athletes like getting cut loose. The bike industry along with the entire outdoor industry unquestionably experienced a boom cycle. Yeah. From really from, I guess, mid 2020 through the end of 2021. Mm, Right. And, um, inevitably we are now in the, 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 we are now in the inevitable bust cycle. Yeah. Like you do not, I don't, I do not, I, I'm sure there are exceptions, but I think most examples of boom cycles in history are followed by a bust cycle. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is true. That is true. Um, so hope, you know, a lot of, there, there's a lot of layoffs. There's a lot of kind of downsizing. There's also a lot of people not returning to the normal during the pandemic. There was a boom cycle, but also a lot of the brands were running on pretty thin staffs because no one expected Mm. them to have a sales rep visiting the shop. And some of them even shut down their warranty departments temporarily. Right. Um, And a lot of staff was working remote that was normally working on site. So there's the thing where a lot of companies haven't ever brought back the demo team, haven't Got brought it. back the full warranty team, don't have a full customer support right. team back in place yet. Mm. And, and then there's other people who are laying people off. So that there's definitely a lot of belt tightening and kind of raft building. Right. And, um, and maybe some of these race teams expanded, right? I mean, grew yes. like numbers of race teams grew and spawned others and, and now, now we're seeing the bus side of that. Yeah, and for a lot of these brands, they have an old inventory problem, mm. which I don't know if that really aligns well with having a race team. Right, right. It And it gets in the way of the hot new products that you would want to be making to have a race team and right. everything. Right. So, yeah, there's definitely s- some discomfort being right. taking place. And... If you're a bike buyer, that's good for you. That is true. Did you see Over the Hump had their inaugural? Well, they're they're back. They're back every winter. Right? They do this. This is the winter. Yep. But they had the um, dual slalom. I guess they had an overwhelmingly positive. Turn oh wow! To where it, it ended up delaying the race over an hour that, because they got so many more participants wow. than they expected. And all the reports are that the course was really f- quite fun. It looked fun from the, um, you know, from the Instagram and what little video I saw. Um, I hope they keep doing it. I imagine they will. Yeah. Yeah. That's great to see that response. And this is something that, that we've talked about that you've talked about wanting to have, have something like that for a long time. Yeah. I, I have kind of a pet theory that the right execution of some sort of, slalom format could really bring a lot of community and riders together and, and fun and kind of a somewhat safer way to have a contest of skills on a bike Mm. compared to like a downhill or an enduro course and way, way more spectator friendly. Right. So I hope it, I hope it works. Yeah. 
what would you take out there if you were to get out there? As of right now, I'd probably take my shadow cat. Right. Um, if I got really into it, I imagine I would maybe put some gears on my black market. Mm, right. Or build like a proper slalom bike, like a hard tailed dirt jump bike with gears. Right. Cause that's, re- that's really There's some what, other differences, but yeah. really that's the main difference, right, right? Between a slalom bike and a dirt jump bike is if you have a rear gear cluster. Right. Right. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll MX my Hanzo. Yeah, or just run it how it is. Yeah. Put some fast tires on it. I bet you it would be a good bike for that course. Yeah. Put some fast tires on it. It's already got gears. What tires would you run? Hmm. What are those Kendas? (laughs) The K-Rads? Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, or the Maxxis Holy Rollers. Right, the Maxxis Holy Rollers. Or the Schwabby made a really light dirt jump tire. Right. But I think all those are 26. Yeah. Um... Maybe like a recon? recon, yeah, or a uh, an icon even. Maybe recon front, icon back. Yeah, depending on the course. But do they do like a thicker casing icon? I mean, on that type of course, you just <laughs> jack up the pressure. Maybe, yeah. yeah. But what does that do to the traction? Yeah, true. But you know, I was looking at that course. There's a lot of like really nicely shaped. Yeah. I think there might have been some more flat turns off camera though. Mm, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'd have to ride the course to say what the best tires right. could, or even to begin to speculate about right. what tires we'd want to run. Yeah. Yeah. I remember walking that area with Matt from over the hump in like twenty fourteen and I'm so glad they finally did it. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's exciting. That's yeah. exciting. And I think they got a great turnout for the XC race too. And their typical, you know, great, great vibes, great li- families, fun. Right. This is what every other week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the next one should be, um, like the 29th or something like that. No, is that right? Yeah. I think it might be Saturday. The, um, I don't know what that, I think I missed by a couple of days. <laughs> 27th. 27th. Yeah. yeah. Saturday the 27th. That's true. That's fantastic. Um, I've got a big reveal. Okay. So uh, I think I'm just going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you shaved your head. I shaved my head. That looks fast. Yeah. looks clean. <laughs> it looks clean. Uh, you know, I was, um, one, I didn't lose a bet. Two, this was not an accidental like miss on the fade, and three, I'm I am I'm healthy. So uh, nice. All Are like, there people been asking you those questions like, or like you know, kind of being like, like so you're <laughs> right? Cause like uh, you're 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 losing you, weight <laughs> exactly <laughs> because I did have that happen when I you know twenty years ago when I lost all my weight I lost it so quick people were asking like is Eric okay is Ak okay yeah and so I, you know totally I was fine. Um, and so this time around, Karen, my wife, is like, you got to put out a public service announcement. So I actually did. I did this a couple of weeks ago. And I put out a little PSA on my on my Instagram. So if those of you saw that, you, know, you already know. But for the rest of you, uh, yeah, I, you know, you would, most people would have never guessed that I was going to do it. You know, because I could grow a full head of hair. Uh, and especially when you, when you gel your hair like I would, you know, I'm kind of kind of bring it back you really can't tell but when I didn't have gel in my hair I was like the numbers of hair on my head I think was decreasing but the the coarseness of my hair was getting way finer oh weird yeah so it was like if I didn't have anything in my hair it was like a kitty cat (laughs) it's like man it's like a it's like a stuffed animal you know it's like so yeah so I um I knew it was going to happen, probably had another 10 years, you know, and I said, you know, I'm just going to, one, I don't want the first time for me to show up someplace, you know, with a shaved head because I screwed up on my, I cut my own hair on the fade on the, you know, back left side of my head where I can't hardest, hardest as a right-handed hair cutter barber. So uh, I just didn't want that to be an accidental oops. And uh, so I waited until I had 11 days off in a row from work. Got home one evening and 
had my boys get after it. <laughs> is it super energizing to have that like extra airflow on your scalp? It is. Well, I'll tell you, you know, cause I've always worn like some sort of, you know, head cover underneath my helmet. So I can't really tell when I ride a bike. Um, <laughs> the place I notice it the most you know the cool pillow feeling on your mm-hmm. cheek? Man, now I have it like all over my head. Nice. So I'm like, oh, this feels so good. You know, <laughs> like rub my head on my pillow. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it's good. Is it an everyday thing? It it doesn't have to be, but I do. Uh, I just, just like a like. Those, sh- I, well, I have one of those, but actually I use a like a, a Gillette razor. Oh, wow. And How long does that take? It just takes three minutes maybe. Is it? Fa- about the same amount of time that it took to gel it and stuff? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out if I, you gain time when you wash your hair. So, yeah. you know, you just wash your face and just keep going. <laughs> um, and you, I think doing my hair, I think doing my hair versus shaving my head, I lose a little bit of time now. Okay. Uh, so I think all, all said and done. And I think the amount of time I spend over the two weeks might, it's it's probably a wash. I think you're more intimidating this way. <laughs> All right. It's my Walter White look, <laughs> you know? or some some Asian villain look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely tougher. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, you think it makes me look older or younger? Hmm. I, I think it's a, wash. it's a wash. Maybe it's a wash. Yeah. Someone said it makes you look wiser. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, and and it is split. Some people say it makes me look younger. Some people say it makes me look older. That one's tough. And partially because my haircut, I think, the way I had it was kind of a younger haircut. That's true. And so I think people... You, a youthful do. A youthful do. So anyways, yeah, I, I actually really like it. It's uh, saved me on uh, actually clearing mental space. That is actually the biggest gain. Clearing mental space because the half hour every 10 days to two weeks of like pretty focused, like you have to get this right. Mm. You know, um, that's uh that's, I'm all for clearing mental space and this is, it's actually cleared some mental space. And getting some, maybe less gray area in your life because there's no like, oh, am I ready for a haircut? It's right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so, uh, you know, I got, you know, I kind of had some conversations with various people, you know, especially, you know, my family, is, my, my wife, most importantly, you know. Those, she like it? She says, when I first started having the conversation almost 30 years ago, 25 years ago, she's like, you don't, don't shave your head. You don't have to. I said, but I think it looked cool. I says, but you don't have to. So, uh, but more recently, I think she's either, either I've, I've worn her out over 25 years of talking about it or she's actually kind of seen or she's just kind of like after 25 years, who cares? You're you. That's what she says. You're you hair, no hair, whatever, you know, I'm going to love you, whatever. So that's uh, cool. It, it works out. She's like, whatever makes you feel better. I like that. Yeah. It's, it's pretty great. Um, I don't know. Is that a good note to end on? I think it might be. Let's do it. All right. Thanks. Hawk. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Thanks to all the listeners, vendors, and riders, and special thanks especially to all the coworkers here at The Path. Let's all remember to love the bike we ride.